And um, we move on to the next talk by Dan Franke. He is also uh, from Studio Saro, and he's the director, animator, and co-founder of Studio Saro, a virtual animation studio which works with an international team of designers, animators, and developers who use the VR Quell painting tool to create experiences both inside and outside VR. He will talk to us about the two works that have already been mentioned. Namu, a short film shortlisted for the 2022 Oscars, fingers crossed, and uh, Tales from Soda Island, the world's first VR series entirely created in Quill and also produced by the studio. And you have the floor. Let's welcome him on stage. Thank you. Right. What? <laughs> all right. Um, hi, guys. Uh, first of all, thanks um, for the Next Lab team for having me a second year in a, in a row. Uh, last, uh, last time I was here for a quick uh, talk, similar to, to Nick's talk, where I spoke about what I've done before uh, co founding Studio Cyro and how I became a quill artist and um, talked about some more production um, sides of working with quill. And this time I'm going to do a short presentation and going a little bit more into depth um, uh, into the two projects that Nick already presented, um, Soda Island and uh, Namu. Uh, who am I? I mean, last time I talked a little bit about myself uh, more. I'm, I'm a quill artist uh, based in Germany. Um, I, you know, co-founded Studio Cyro together with Nick and a couple other guys. As he said, we are scattered around the world. We have people in Miami, LA, Canada, Germany, uh, Austria, UK. We are, we have been a virtual studio from the beginning. And um, yeah, yesterday I met Nick for the very first time in real life. So <laughs> um, it's been a, it's been a crazy journey of founding a studio. Um, like virtually from the get-go uh, without really knowing each other um, so and and we've done that like two months before COVID hit um, so uh, nothing really changed for us in terms of our uh, workflows um, but yeah we are one of the very few uh, VR animation studios who are only using Quill um, and again last time I talked about I talked about specific um, production aspects of, of using Quill, not only for little clips, um, for things that you share, you know, on Instagram or anything like that, but really using Quill as a production tool for big, big films. Well, 15-minute films, which in VR is a, is a big film. And it's a challenging process, and we are learning, you know, with every, every little project. Um, we are stepping up our game every, every, little every single time. And well, we started out, we founded the studio, and a, and a month after, we started pre-production on our very first series of three episodes, um, an entire season of Tales from Soda Island. And uh, so it's, yeah, it's been kind of crazy that from the get-go, as a studio, we just could do our own series, and, and you know, we didn't have a client who, you know, as, as Nick said, who destroys our vision. We had Facebook who, um, you know, funded us, and we gladly could just do whatever we wanted. And I mean, Tales from Solar Island is kind of the craziest IP uh, you could imagine. It's, a, it's an island um, made out of music. Um, all of the little places that you can see are uh, little places like funny, um, quirky uh, places that you can visit on the island that are all based around music, musical aspects. And um, you know, the entire island, all the inhabitants, are creating, sort of living off of music. Um, so sort of the premise of the series is what happens if in an island like that, that's, music, uh, that, that's musically and, and, and colorful, what happens if silence comes in as a creature and disrupts sort of what's happening on the island? So that was the, the first season, uh, three episodes, 
that we've done. And again, with every episode, we stepped out of our game. The first episode was seven minutes of you know a, a, a static camera. You know, viewer could look around a little bit. We had a, we had one set that was changing from scene to scene, but you know it was very limited because we don't we didn't know what would happen and if we could do a whole film in Quill. You know, we didn't have we we had to learn learn by do uh, by doing the the you know the first episode and. Um, well, we grew with every episode. We in the second episode we had moving camera. We we traveled through 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 a forest, and with the third episode we had a whole race, a race in VR. So what I'm going to talk about today is the next two episodes, episode four and five, called the Golden Record, um, which is about uh, well, a golden record um, which gets found uh, in the forest, and it's a little ant. Uh, living in an anthill in a sort of a post-apocalyptic society, uh, being imprisoned in that sort of machinery-style uh, um, world, he he runs out of the anthill and discovers something very interesting. Um, so yeah, and, and discovers sort of a a you know music inside of him. So here's a little trailer. So yeah, that is the. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was the first episode of the second season, and it was actually kind of a spin-off episode. Uh, it wasn't following the you know the, the the arc that we set up for the first season. So it was a little bit of a let's do something else. Let's let's showcase a, a part of the island which is com completely isolated and functioning differently than the rest of the island. And then in the fifth episode, we came back to the island again, had an entire trip uh, across the island, and actually discovering um, sort of like, almost like a documentary uh, from A to Z, how is soda being made? Because Soda Island um, has a big volcano in the, in the center where soda is actually produced. And we follow um, the journey of a raindrop falling to the ocean, getting picked up by a creature um, traveling through the desert uh, into that volcano, um, getting uh, uh, you know mixed with a lot of weird liquids, and in the end we have soda. So a very fun, again a very different episode. And um, in right at the end of that episode, we kind of go back to our little story arc. And um, yeah, I don't want to say too much about that. Let's watch this. For the ones wondering why it's called The School Trip, you'll have to watch the film yourself and find out, because it's a little bit of a twist in the end. Well, I don't know it's called it, but um, there we go. Uh, and um, again, like in this film, 
you know, we tried something else. Once again, we scaled up the, the well, the scale of the environments and um, had like super long shots of the camera flying through these sets. And it almost, we kind of built uh, the episode like a, like a, uh, like a ride, uh, you know, uh, uh, you go through, uh, you, you sit on a track, you sit in, in, a, in a sort of cauldron and you fly through these sets for, for minutes and you can just, you know, watch what's happening around you. The entire set is animated and it's very lively and a lot of fun. So let's uh, look at a little bit of a breakdown um, into how we approach these scenes. Again, uh, Funi, our concept artist, um, who's now also directing uh, the second season. I directed the first season. He now took over uh, directing the, this season and also being concept artist at the same time. He's creating these crazy detailed um, uh, character designs and also uh, these sets. And um, well, it's our task to then uh, paint them in, in VR. And we have a very specific uh, approach to that. Um, we start uh, building them as gray boxes, basically. So just a couple of block, uh, blocks that we, uh, that we set out to, to block out the, the scene. And for me then, um, going through and, and setting up a camera, uh, and then step by step, you know, a, as you would do an animatic, uh, and going into the previous step by step, um, you know, animating and adding more things and more details to these to these scenes. So, uh, so yeah, let's watch this little breakdown. And then, you know, getting more and more details. Um, and you know, at, at the end, we, we uh, add uh, animation to it. So again, here, this was a very special shot because um, this is the, the end, traveling to the outside and discovering uh, this specific thing uh, in the forest for the very first time. And uh, let's go, yeah, let's, let's go back real quick. And what I wanted to do there um, is actually playing with lighting. Uh, so we, we built the set and then darkened everything and then once he comes in he has a little bit of a flashlight and then he lights the scene and Which also means you have to then paint and animate the light on top of the set Like frame by frame and this guy was walking through the set for like a minute and I had to Put a light spot into you know the places where he would actually put the light spot and you know lighting and quill is kind of a tricky thing but it it really pays off if you you know take the time to do it. And one more. Right. Well, um, Solar Island is obviously a lot more than what I just shown. I, um, I'm just limited in my, in my time. And um, as you can imagine, you know, building the sets is one thing, animating the character animation and everything, and then having Nick uh, having the daunting task uh, to, to uh, optimize everything, to get it all into a, a film that runs on the quest is, uh, is a very challenging process. But um, again, we are learning um, while we're doing it. This, as a fun little uh, uh, inside, is our studio. This is how we run our studio. Yes, we are virtual. Yes, we never really see each other, but we can see each other in 2D form, um, you know, sitting on our desks. Everybody has their desk. Uh, uh, well, some of us have, our, have, our, have their desk, uh, you know, um, have their own desk. This is mine. For some reason, there's a mallard on there. I, I didn't do it, and I'm a little bit too lazy to <laughs> decorate my desk for some reason. Um, but as you can see, like, people are... You, we, we know if, if somebody's working or if they are AFK, and we have our meeting rooms, we have our Cyro meeting rooms, and it's, it's a lot of fun, and, and very, it really feels like you're going to the office every day. So just as a little uh, insight, it's, it's called Gather, uh, this tool, and um, you know, recommendation, it really works. So, all right. And now, uh, speaking to uh, Namu, that Nick and I worked on, uh, basically starting working on that uh, even before we started, uh, we started um, founding the, the studio. So that was actually starting 2020, uh, well, even before that actually, 2019. Um, <clears throat> but it was a much longer process. So for, for Soda Island, each episode takes like three, four, maybe five months. Um, and we are sometimes working uh, you know, on pre-production while we are finishing an episode. So it's all happening pretty much at the same time. And it's 
almost like it's very a very quick process. We have to speed through uh, production. With Namu being a, a short film for a big VR company like Beobab, they're pretty much the biggest VR studio. It was a much longer process. We could take our time, could really finesse um, those, uh, you know, the, the story and the designs. Um, the story is based on, um, based is, uh, yeah, the story is from Eric O, who is the director who was nominated for the Oscar last year. And uh, it was a, a story inspired by the death of his grandfather like 10 years ago. And he made this sketch and never really got to doing it. Um, but then, once Quill was around, he realized this could be the right tool to, to make this film and make it with Baobab. And we then had Ah Sang Lee coming in, doing amazing concept art. We had a lot of scenes. Um, the, the scene around us, very similar to the Multiverse Bakery in Solar Island, it's, it's one set, just a tree that, uh, that is in front of us and it grows um, as we tell a life story of, of a guy, um, like aging. It had, it just, you know, was a lot of scenes, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, tree changes, tree morphs, and um, our challenge was to create, um, you know, to, to take this set, this painting, and then perfectly recreate it in Quill. And as you can see here, as a, as a little ex example, the tree on the left is painted in Photoshop, the tree on the right is painted in Quill, and it's basically matching. Um, you couldn't tell, and again, with the per perfect um, concept art that Asang provided, I was just going in and basically, <laughs> brush by brush, recreating what he did in Photoshop. And then Nick uh, was, was responsible for uh, modeling the, the characters. We had a big character lineup. With every scene, the character was growing. Uh, so <laughs> that was a, a lot of work. Here you can see uh, Nick actually uh, showcasing how we, how we animate. Some, uh, well, most of the animation, especially those morphs uh, of scenes morphing into each other, are done frame by frame, and as you can see, sometimes object by object. We have hundreds of objects in this, in this tree that are sort of collected throughout, uh, throughout uh, the character's life, and they stay in the tree. So in the, in the beginning, you have a couple of toys, but they, stay, they go up into the tree, they stay there, and then more, more and more things get added, and in the end, it's just a, it's a crazy big scene that somehow has to get optimized, and again, Nick did a <laughs> fantastic job there. Um, this is a little breakdown from a first sketch, basically, uh, you know, an animatic sketch that, um, that Eric provided, um, then modeling the, the scene in Quill, <clears throat> uh, Eric doing uh, just Photoshop uh, uh, animatic, just uh, drawings for the, for the um, Quill animator, and then we would come in and animate it. The quill animation was done by John Paul Brower, Brower which came in uh, afterwards. Um, in the beginning, we had Javier, uh, actually a Pixar animator, who, who set up these first animations. It was the perfect um, reference, and um, you know, with with the set and the characters in there, it was you know a lot of stuff going on. We had a we had a rain scene here with, as you can see in the tree, there's just so there's so much stuff, and all of this is a lot of triangles and. You know, um, all of this has to be animated. <clears throat> this is sort of a, one of the sad moments. And here you can see also um, what we did with going from Quill, uh, going from the Quill film that's entirely made in Quill and that is watchable in VR to the 2D version. So, um, you know, uh, all of that stuff was then uh, taken, exported, and then rendered. And then we applied um, some, you know, uh, like, uh, um, uh, you know, 2D effects to make it look sort of like watercolor painting. Um, that was a whole another process, and it took another year basically. Uh, and just now, the film is really coming out, uh, you know, uh, on HBO Max like a month ago. And uh, yeah, as we said, the uh, film was very successful in, in festivals. Um, and this, as, a, as an example, was uh, Eric then providing uh, drawovers in Photoshop over our animation. Uh, to really get that precise animation in there, and because we also could take the time to finesse everything. Um, as, as one tip, uh, what we do in, at, at, Sola, uh, at Studio Cyro, we use SyncSketch, uh, a, a great tool to, to give feedback, to collaboratively uh, uh, draw over um, you know, designs, like static designs, or even videos, 
Um, and um, yeah, it, you can see live when somebody's painting, and um, it's, it's perfect, perfect for our Quill workflow, which led to a funny moment where um, we realized we can uh, render out 360 videos and then comment on that. And Furni, our director, was like, uh, you, you rendered the wrong camera. It, it's looking you know, backwards until he realized he could actually you know, scrub through and then actually rotate the camera. So, um, but yeah, it's a super useful tool. And so, let's watch the trailer. <laughs> When I, when I came onto the project, um, Eric, together with Javier, um, had already done like a super rough quill animatic um, for the entire film. Um, and I watched it for the first time in VR, and I think it was the only, the first and the only moment where I actually cried in VR like crazy, even just with little sketches. And um, yeah, it's, I, from that point on, I knew this was going to be special. It was a whole process to get there, but this film really uh, was a big hit for, for us as a, as a team working on it, uh, for Baobab um, and for Quill itself. Like, we almost got that Oscar nomination. So the only thing I want to say, I'm very excited to see, yours, to see your projects tomorrow, and um, maybe the actual Oscar nomination is you know, going to come for Quill with you guys, so uh, we'll see. Um, that's it for now, thanks. Thank you so much, amazing work. Congratulations to, to the studio. Uh, it's great that you met yesterday for the first time <laughs> yeah, here in Madrid crazy. at Next Lab. How about that for sort of like uh, Emotional. I mean, I'm very happy about your virtual studio and your desks and everything that you've met here in Madrid. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah, Next Lab brings people together. So. Hey, so points, <laughs> many points <laughs> to Next Lab. It's a, a great anecdote for, yeah. for us, I yeah. guess. It's an historic moment for us. Like, uh, it's, it's crazy. Definitely. I mean, it looks tidy and it's all good, but there's nothing like interaction in person. <laughs> So, any questions from the floor? This one over there, we're going to get you the mic in a minute. Hello, congratulations for, for all your work. Um, I would like to know, um, how do you jump to your first um, grid production? Um, well, so how, how we started out making our big production from doing little quill stuff to Big series, you mean? Yeah, when, when you decide to make a, mm -hmm. a big project. Well, I mean, it was basically Facebook coming to us, asking us, hey, I mean, all of you guys want to make a studio, want to make a big series? And we were like, well, I guess. Um, and we just jumped into it. And again, first it was sort of a smaller uh, uh, scale, uh, first episode, and then we just grew and grew and grew with learning new techniques, inventing new techniques. Like in the first, uh, uh, in, the, in the third um, episode, we had a whole race in VR, and for that we had to invent a, a, a camera flying through the set, which is doable and quill. Um, so it's just a learning process. Um, I, I have worked in uh, 3D animation before, and I've worked in a studio directing, and I, I've known that, like the workflow, the pipeline of how to set up 
a, a film like that. Um, but Quill is a totally different thing. I mean, the folder structure in Quill, editing in Quill, yeah, there's there's so many things that you have to figure out and, and learn, and we don't even know if we're making if we're doing things right. But um, yeah, it's you have to take the chances if they're if they were, they are given to you, and um, yeah, we, the we're moment, running. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Excellent. So it was Facebook actually, the metaverse. Yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, they came to us. Goro uh, also is one of the leading figures, and he was always saying like, hey. You know, uh, uh, do you guys want to do something big and stuff? And uh, I was like, yeah, sure, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but then making a series, also committing to a series, like for like one, two, three years now, is a big thing. And With two studio, seasons. It's, it's defining what you are as a studio. And um, we're always trying to also find new uh, ideas, new projects. I mean, again, you guys have a lot of great ideas. And I mean, within weeks, you guys can make a film, make a, a clip. I mean, who, who else can do that but with learning a, pro, uh, a tool for the first time? Uh, so, you know, looking at the virtual animation uh, community, we're always uh, in search for great talent to will bring you, on. Will you be the here team. tomorrow, right? Yes, I will be. Of course, I'm looking forward to your to, to your work. You're watching. Um, yeah. <laughs> Any more questions from the floor before we close? Yeah, I have another, another one. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Um, some some of us we are working with with Quill. And, and this morning in another meeting, um, some of us have the question of how do you manage the files and the scenes <laughs> between you? Because in Quill, you know, are mm -hmm. quite difficult. It is. Um, you know, in Maya, you usually, uh, when, when an environment gets updated by the environment modeler uh, in the main file, you just hit refresh and it gets referenced in and it's just an automatic process. In animating, uh, you have, you know, it all works much, much better, obviously, in tools like that. And in Quill, it's, it's a very manual process of, uh, like, we have our departments, let's say. We have an environment modeler. We have a, a character animator. Uh, I'm responsible for layout and, and a camera and that sort of stuff. So we have, we work in parts, and then we, you always have to manually import those parts of the scene, put it into a photo structure that is very uh, precise um, to not lose things. And then when it comes to editing in Quill, that's, uh, that's, that's, I'm gonna, you know. That, like, make, making a cut in Premiere in like five seconds takes an hour in Quill, because you have to move so many different layers, you have to move groups, you have to move the, cam the camera uh, uh, keyframes uh, separately. So I know the, the question of, uh, like, how do you run this? That I, I ask that question myself every time, and we are gradually trying to get to good processes, but we can only do, you know, that much, like we can only do a little better uh, every every day, and you know, if you guys have an idea of running th these things, you know, <laughs> let, let's 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 you know come Stalk, together and find yeah. the, find the right way. <laughs> Great, it's a pain you love, though. Yes, it definitely it definitely pays off. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, otherwise let's give uh, Dan and of course uh, Nick a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you.